Okay, so this is going to be a video on how I got VR to work on this Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 uh, laptop, which has a uh, well, well, Ryzen 9, which is a SICK processor, and a GeForce uh, RTX 2060 uh, Max-Q, uh, 6 gigabytes worth of uh, video RAM. But unfortunately, this thing, in order to you know save on heat and power when you're... Uh, when you're just using it as a computer, uh, it has a built-in, very slow AMD GPU. And it's probably some sort of uh, integrated, maybe it's like an APU um, in the processor itself. And so it's just really low spec. It'll barely run uh, VR. And because of that, you have to uh, do a couple things to get it to work. Uh, basically, have it ignore your uh, AMD GPU. So what I did is, you know, pulled up the device manager. You can uh, find that, you know, just by typing that in. And then the first thing I did uh, after installing the Oculus stuff was I basically just disabled this, right? Once it's disabled, you can uh, restart your computer. Uh, you're probably going to lose this monitor if you're outputting anything. Uh, this thing will go from 120 hertz down to 60 because it's just running off the, the NVIDIA card, just kind of like an autistic mode. Um, and as soon as, uh, as soon as that happens, once, once you restart, you can um, X out of that. You can turn on your Oculus software. So once you have your Oculus software on, uh, you can go in devices, uh, it'll probably load up your home uh, if you have it connected. Um, but in here, you know, make sure that um, you have your audio uh, as well going on on the both sources if you want, and uh, you can set your graphics performance. You know, what, people leave it in automatic, but if you want to play DCS, you should probably try prioritize performance. Or uh, I have it on balanced, but I'm probably going to put it back in performance. Okay. Um, once, uh, once your headset's on, you have to enable link on your, uh, your VR. Um, other than that, oh yeah, all right, so once, um, once you get, uh, basically the home to show up through the quest link on that, it doesn't matter if you have USB 3 or USB 2, uh, it only sends 100 megabits out to the, or maybe it's 150, I don't, I don't really know, it's not enough to warrant a USB 3 cable, that's for sure. I'm, uh, I'm plugged into the USB-C port on the right. Um, it works on the left, but I, it looks like it, it stutters a lot less on the right. Uh, just from my PC, yours could be way different, uh, but that's just what I'm doing. All I, you know, I, I just use this for my capture card for uh, live streaming, uh, or I put a, a la you know, laptop hard drive in there, SSD or something. If I'm playing like Call of Duty, because that game's like 400 gigs at this point. Uh, this worked with the USB 2 charging cable that came with the headset, but uh, this is the USB 3 uh, 15 foot cable, just because I like having a 15 foot cable. Yeah, once you get it running home uh, on your VR headset, you can go back into your device manager, and then under your display adapters, you can re-enable this. Uh, make sure you've already run your uh, Oculus software and make sure it's working before you basically turn it back on. Uh, turn on your AMD. And then you'll be able to basically launch your VR that way and your NVIDIA control panel will work again as long as the AMD one's turned on. You can't access these settings if... Uh, you can't access these settings if you only have one of the GPUs enabled. But yeah, once you turn that on, uh, you can go find your Oculus client. It's in your uh, programs folder .exe and make sure that your program, not your global settings, uh, right now I have it on this, but it didn't work when I had it on this to begin with. I mean, you don't need it like this. You can have it on auto select. I just do a lot of video production, so I have to keep it on this. It's easier for me. But yeah, you have to add the Oculus client from your programs folder and then uh, 
make sure that that thing is using your high performance NVIDIA processor, not your global settings or integrated graphics. Make sure this thing is forced on. Once you have your uh, Quest plugged in and it's running and things are working, you should go to your details and then find anything that says Oculus on it. And you have to do this every time you play VR, which kind of is lame. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. The OVR um, redirects, the OVR server, the OVR service launcher, anything that says OVR, basically, you need to set your priority from normal to real time and then click uh, change priority. And as soon as you do that, basically the, the artifacting and the, the frame rate from your quest gets priorities over anything else that's being rendered on your computer or any background processes that might slow you down because what it does is that it, it renders out a video of what you're playing and then outputs it through the cable into your headset and you need that to be the most uh, you need to have that uh, your highest priority basically or else things will uh, basically you'll have the game playing on your computer at like 36 frames per second or, or greater but on your headset you might only see like four or five frames per second which can get you sick real quick so yeah give that highest priority there's a debug tool this one comes with your your oculus headset um software it's called oculus debug tool okay and you can find that in your program set uh for oculus and make sure that asynchronous space warp is disabled. What uh, space warp and asynchronous space warp does is that once your frame rate uh, starts dipping, it will take your fast frame rate and put it into a, uh, a lower frame rate that's locked. So basically your, you know, your Oculus will, um, will output 72 hertz, right? 72 frames per second. Uh, but as soon as it experiences a hiccup, those 72s uh, gets halved into 36 frames per second, which, uh, you know, it's, it's doable, but this thing can definitely do more than 36 frames per second in VR mode uh, in DCS. So, you know, that's, that's up to you. But for me, I have it disabled. And then sometimes to make it work, you have to hit control and one on your numpad. Obviously, this thing doesn't have a, a one on a numpad, so uh, sometimes you have to hit this and that to disable the asynchronous warping, even though this thing's disabled here. So, uh, I don't know, just heads up. And last but not least, in the NVIDIA control panel, which you could just get from right-clicking on your desktop and go in the control panel, make sure that your power management mode is prefer maximum performance okay and then um, on this computer sp specifically there's the armory crate app and turn that on and then just take it out of whatever mode it's in and put that sucker in turbo all right and i think you're ready to rock after that all right let me know if you got any questions